Hi there, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Mary. If you are a returning subscriber, as always, welcome home. So today I'm here, I want to go on with some discussion on the issues that are affecting teenage girls. So please, if you're new, do not forget to subscribe. Subscribe, like this video, and share if you can. So let's talk about issues that are affecting young girls and especially teenage girls in Kenya and all over the world. So check out on my previous video. I had started a conversation on this and in that video I had highlighted four main issues that most of the girls are, are undergoing. And those are the issues that are affecting them, uh, affecting their well-being, affecting their performance in school and even their mental state of mind. So let's go on with our discussion. Today I want us to talk about three, uh, three to four issues that are affecting girls. So remember uh, my focus is on the girls, not that I've forgotten the boy child. I've not forgotten the boy child. I'll be back to talk more about the boy child. So the first issue that I want to talk about today is boy-girl relationship. So how does it affect girls? So most of the girls, and I'm talking about teenagers, most of the teen girls engage in this boy girl relationship and it, mostly it is out of peer pressure so like for example if a friend has a boyfriend then they'll persuade this other friend who doesn't have a boyfriend to get one and this girl who is innocent who understands that probably this is wrong will feel the pressure of the peers around her and she'll eventually fall into their trap and therefore she will uh, find herself being connected to a boyfriend and remember the challenges that will come with that we have early pregnancies we have infections like stis stds and even hiv and aids and sometimes there's abortion and all that so most of the girls will find that they fall into this trap because of their peers the other reason why they engage in boy girl relationship is because maybe they do not have basic needs and especially are girls that come from poor families. You may find that sometimes they don't have the basic needs. They don't have their sanitary pads. They don't have, you know, body oil or body lotion. You know, they don't have soap. So what can they do? It will be easy for them to engage in a relationship with a peer, a boyfriend, or sometimes they may find themselves falling in the hands of older men so that they can get money and eventually buy whatever they need. And that is not always the case. That is a perception that if they get into this relationship, then someone is going to provide for them. And then the second challenge that most of the girls face, and this one is directly affecting the parents, is lack of parental guidance. So if you have been so keen in my videos, most of the time I talk about absent parents. And I do understand because I'm a parent and for that matter, I'm a working parent. So most of the time, parents, we are very busy in that we are not available to guide our children. So most of the time we entrust them to other people. This could be the people that are helping us in our houses or in our homes, sometimes uh, grandparents, sometimes uncles and aunts. So we forget that it is our number one role to ensure that our children are well guided. So this is what happens. Most of the parents they have a little connection with their children. They are not there to offer pieces of advice. They are not there to listen to their children when they have, you know, questions to ask, you know, when they are curious about something. The parent is not, uh, is not present. And because the parent is not uh, present, they get guidance from other people. And that is where the problem is. These people could mislead them, especially if they go to their peers their peers are going to mislead them. And you may end up blaming yourself for being absent. So what can you do as a parent? Think about it. What can you do so that you offer the right guidance to your children so that at least you are present in their lives? Observe the changes that are taking place. Sometimes parents are shocked on the type of children that they come to realize later on that, oh, my daughter is this, my daughter is that, my son is this and that. And you may end up maybe even not believing what people are telling you. But the problem is not these other people. The problem is you. 
you are never there to offer the right parental guidance to your children. So as much as you are busy at work, as much as you are busy doing this and that, ensure that you create time for your children and offer the guidance that they need. Be the number one to offer guidance. Remember, you are the primary uh, caregiver of these children. And because you are the primary caregiver, ensure that you guide them. When girls uh, have questions to ask, things that are happening around them, who will they turn to if the parents are not there? They'll turn to the wrong people. And that is what I'm talking to. So I hope you get the sense of what I'm referring to. And then uh, number three, the other challenge that has affected girls, and it is something that is quite unfortunate, is that most parents are irresponsible. So you may wonder irresponsible in which uh, ways. Some parents do not provide for their daughters. They don't. They don't provide the basic needs. You can imagine basic needs, sanitary pads. And when you go to the supermarket, you will find sanitary pads as cheap as 30 uh, Kenyan shillings. But sometimes parents don't care. They don't want to provide for their daughters. Sometimes they don't want to provide even body lotion. They don't want to provide anything, food. They are just there. Maybe some parents are drunkards. You know, they are not present at home. So if you are not providing for your child, dear parent, who do you expect to do that? And you're going to realize that we will have other people. The prey or, you know, the perverts will be there present and ready to help to provide for your child. And remember, this is a girl. They are not going to provide for free. They are going to exchange, uh, they are going to ask for sexual favors from your daughters. And the reason is because as a parent, you have just decided not to provide for your child. Try as much as you can. Sometimes I understand that parents, uh, they have tight financial, you know, financial budget. But try as much as you can. Get the basic needs for your child. And I'm talking about a daughter. Get the basic needs for your daughter. So that those basic needs will not be the reason for her to go astray. So you can imagine if your daughter becomes today pregnant. And then as she tells people, it is because I did not have sanitary parts. That is why I decided to engage in premarital sex how would you feel as a parent sanitary pad for kenyan shillings you know for 30 kenyan shillings or 50 kenyan shillings how would you feel about that so try as much as you can give them the basic needs remember i'm talking about the basic needs and when they come from school let them get food whatever the food that you can afford so that they don't run out there get to get someone who can buy for them food so I hope you understand what I mean by that. So it is an issue that is cutting across in many places in the world. Most of the girls usually go astray because parents do not provide for them. And because they don't provide for them, then they end up running uh, to the wrong people so that they can get, you know, they can get these basic needs that we are not giving them. So I hope you get this right. And then the other issue is that they lack role models. And you may wonder, like, what do they mean by uh, role models? They, we have a lot of role models around. No, that is not the point. The point is, are you a role model to your child? Are you a role model? Because charity begins at home. These children, they learn first at home before they go out to the world. So if your own child cannot see you or identify you as a role model, who do you expect for them to identify outside there. So most girls, they don't have the right role models. At home, you find mothers are drunkards, fathers are drunkards, they are absent, you know, they are not, they are never present, they are always busy. So they don't have a person to look up to. And because they don't have a person to look up to, it becomes a challenge to them. They'll end up, you know, falling in the wrong groups. And because they'll get into these wrong groups, then they'll be messed up they'll be totally messed up. And by the time we realize that these kids have been messed up, then it will be too late. And that is what we are trying to avoid. So can you be the first role model to your child so that your child can understand that they can equally get other role models outside there? So parents, it is high time that we try as much as we can and be there for our daughters. Let us sit down and have conversations with them. 
Let us talk about the challenges that they are going through. Let us talk about uh, matters to do with sex, you know, sexuality. Let us just have an open conversation because you will realize that uh, between boys and girls, girls are the ones that are most affected. And they are affected because they don't have the right people to talk to. So if you are a parent and you cannot talk to your child, then identify someone that can do that on your behalf. This could be people in your family, a sister, a brother who is, you know, very close to them. Or you can get a teacher. And if you cannot do that, then please identify workshops and groups that do support girls and boys or teenagers. I refer these workshops. They are going to be very instrumental because in these workshops, they are going to be empowered. They are going to be given the right tools and therefore they are going to be helped to make the right and informed decisions. Because once they do the, once they have the tools, then they'll be empowered to know that as much as they may lack the basic needs, they can still say no to premarital sex. They can find a way of, you know, surviving, working hard in school and having a bright future. So it is up to you as a parent to see how best you're going to help your child so that eventually they become successful young women and they come out of the society as people that have that pride, as, as young women that can fit into the society. So let's think about that. It is a very interesting topic. You can talk about it with a friend. Brent, I, I know you cannot miss a friend maybe that has a daughter of your age. Go talk to them. And you're going to realize that sometimes the challenges that you are facing or the fears that you have, another parent has the same fears or the same challenges. So what do you think about this video? I would love to hear your comment. I'd love to read your comments in the comment section. So there are these two things that really concern me. And the first one is on lack of parental guidance. What do you think we can do around this, dear parents? What can we do as parents? And then the second one is on lack of parental responsibility. These are two issues that are greatly affecting our daughters. So what can we do around these two? So please write a comment in the comment section. I'll be grateful to read your feedback. And please, if you are new, if you're watching this video for the first time, remember to subscribe. Thank you for your time and goodbye for now.